Hi folks, Matt Easton here. So some of you noticed the other day I put a video up and Wallhammer from the other room that I film in uh, was missing and there was an axe on the wall and this is a little review of that axe. It is this. Um, so it is known as the early Slavic axe. It's actually kind of I think sort of 11th century kind of uh, copied from a, an example that was found archaeologically. Um, and I bought it from Wolfland, obviously I'll put the link below uh, to the website and to the product. And it's actually made by a smithy, uh, smiths called um, Arma Epona, and I believe they're in Czech Republic. Um, and essentially I, <laughs> I've been doing videos uh, obviously for a couple of years now, and it was evident that I didn't actually have a decent axe. I've got um, an antique Indian axe I showed a few times, so I thought, right, I need to get a one-handed axe. I had a look around. This looked pretty decent. It's clearly uh, that they're kind of smith uh, forged rather than um, kind of stamped out or made in uh, India or China. They're, you know, European made, hand forged, um, and it only cost me, with courier to the UK, it cost uh, 130 euros, which is about 100 pounds. So um, not cheap, but not expensive either. Kind of middle range, fairly affordable for a decent handmade axe. Um, First up, I chose this model essentially because, like I say, I wanted primarily I wanted a one-handed axe I could use for demonstration in videos, but I also wanted a sharp axe that I could use for test cutting various things with at a later point. So you'll get to see me using this on stuff. Um, now, so I wanted a sharp axe. I didn't want a sort of reenactment style blunt um, axe for for fighting with or. or you know, uh, sparring with I suppose. Incidentally a lot of people ask about um, axe use in HEMA. There isn't really much um, conventional axe use shown in uh, historical um, treatises. Uh, in actual fact pretty much all, all we've got um, with a few little bits and little details here and there what we've mainly got is poleaxe stuff and obviously poleaxe is a long uh, man high weapon um, so it's it's a very different thing really it's um, more like sort of quarter staff use almost with a with a with an axe and a, or a, a hammer and a spike on the end um, so one handed axe stuff we don't really have much in the treatises nevertheless um, there are enough details in some of the treatises and other descriptive accounts that we can put together a fairly plausible system of use for the axe by and large, if you know how to use a one-handed sword, then you can transfer that knowledge to a one-handed axe and adapt it. Obviously, the axe um, has the weight at the far end, whereas a sword has the weight tending towards your hand. This axe is quite nice. It's not too heavy. Um, it's, not, it's not actually as light as I thought it would be. Um, however, that's partly for a reason that I'll mention in a minute to do with the shaft. Um, so the head, how good is it? Well, um, it's uh, supposedly... Uh, case hardened um, forged steel um, so it should be hard but not very brittle um, as you can see it's got a forged kind of surface uh, pretty much fresh from the um, uh, kind of heat treatment process um, and it so it's kind of oil blackened uh, from the forge fresh sort of forged finish um, I'm not actually sure what method they use to make the socket there's a couple of different ways of making an axe socket. One is essentially to forge it into a sort of tongue that you forge around and then you hammer forge to the flat of the blade. Careful that's quite spiky that. Um, and the other way is to um, form a kind of end of a wedge section here and you, you kind of hammer through it to create an eye and then you forge around a stake. I suspect that's the way that this has been done. Looking at it I can't see any evidence of a kind of, oh maybe there is a weld around there actually. Yeah, I think there actually is. Um, okay, so maybe it is the lapped around method they've used, but um, it certainly appears to be traditionally forged. It's not cast or anything like that. Um, it is forged out of a, uh, a lump of um, steel. Um, so this style of axe, as I mentioned, I wanted one that was kind of was going to cover various periods, um, and um, lots of people would look at kind of dark age axes, and there are specific shapes and types of axe which you find before 1000 AD um, and, and after 1000 AD you get certain types that aren't really found much before that. <clears throat> this is a style that kind of broaches both, it kind of goes, they do appear, axes like this do uh, start to appear in the 10th century which is the 900s, 901 to 1001 um, and 
you, they then kind of just stay right the way through to the Renaissance. You find axes with this basic blade shape right the way through the medieval period. So I kind of thought this is a good generic kind of axe shape to go with. In actual fact, as you get past about 1200, m most axes tend to have something on the back, a spike or a hammer. Um, but they don't always, and you certainly do see representations of simple axes like this in 14th and 15th century treatises. So if you're wearing full 15th century plate armour and you have an axe like this, it wouldn't look totally out of place. It's not maybe the most typical type of axe to be found at that time. Usually you'd find one um, with, with a spike at the back, for example, or a hammer. But simple axes did still exist at that time. Um, and it's not dissimilar, it has to be said, to a Danax head. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than a Danax head, and the um, blade is more flared. Danax heads uh, tend to go more gradually to the, um, to the edge and tend not to be quite as spiky as, the, uh, this, as this at top and bottom. The other thing that's special about Danaxes is that because they're larger, they have a special way of being made, of being forged, that means that this main portion of the blade in the middle is often very thin, and I mean like really thin, uh, like three millimetres. If you look at the examples in the Museum of London, I posted some examples I think about three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, on the um, Scholar Facebook page. Um, they, I've, um, there's a link to some measurements there, and I put a thing on my armoury as well, on a thread on my armoury, that showed that you know they, they can be three millimetres thick at the sort of main part of the blade, so they're really, really light. This is a bit thicker than that. This is probably about five millimetres, I would say, thick in the blade. So it's not particularly light head. Um, however, you've got a lot of edge for your a lot of bang for your buck essentially. Um, that's a, about a, what is that, probably about a nine inch edge. So fairly long um, edge on it, which obviously for offending someone is useful. The other thing to say of course is that generally speaking axes are not thought of as thrusting weapons, but when you've got an axe head that, that, that is that shape, you can very clearly thrust with it, okay? which was another attraction to this style of axe. So the quality of the head, uh, yes, it's clearly forged, it seems to be well made, it has a nice ring to it, it's obviously been heat treated um, fairly well. Um, I do have some criticisms, I'll deal with, deal with them all in one go. So first of all with the head, well first up is the issue of sharpness, I did request that it be sharp and I wouldn't want to rub my hand too hard on that but it's not what I would call sharp, okay, it's not arm shaving sharp. Now, I know that a wood chopping axe doesn't need to be, debatably a battle axe doesn't need to be. However, I did request that it be sharp, and it's not really what I would call sharp. Okay, uh, So I will need to sharpen that properly myself. It definitely comes to an edge, it comes to a wedge, but it has not really been properly sharpened. Um, so that's my first criticism. Second criticism is that if you look along the shaft, I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera, but if I point the shaft directly at the camera, the edge of the blade is slightly skewed. Now, it's difficult for me to tell whether that's a, a result of, a, of the fact that the edge is not in line with the socket, and I suspect that that's the case, or in some cases it can simply be that the socket's not mounted completely symmetrically on the shaft, which is less of, less of a problem because it's, you know, that's to do with the way it's mounted on the shaft and not the actual head. However, looking at it, I think that the edge is very slightly out of um, out of true, out of the straight line with the socket, which is not very good. I mean, it's not it's not a huge problem with an axe because an axe tends to hit perpendicular. We're not draw cutting on this kind of thing. It doesn't matter like it does with a sword or a knife. However, to me, it's a little bit annoying. Okay, it's only it's a hundred pound axe, but it's not that cheap. I think it should be straight, and uh, that would be my advice to um, the um, armor epony smith would be to check your axes are straight uh, once you've stuck them on a shaft. Okay, uh, And it, it's not a big job to straighten it um, for a smith, but it would be a big job for someone like me to try and straighten it at home. Okay, uh, next up, uh, and really the only main criticism I have with the axe at all, is that the shaft is a little bit too thick. Now, I'm not small, I'm not massive, uh, but I've got relatively uh, well-sized hands, and I'm six foot one, I'm not a small person, and I can't really get a good grip around the axe. It's about the right uh, size for if I was gripping something two-handed and had a good grip on it, but this is not a two-handed axe. This is a one-handed axe, wants to be used with a shield. 
um, and it's not giving me a firm enough grip. Now, conversely, the fact that they've given you more wood than you need, both in terms of width and length, I would say, because I think the shaft's a bit too long for this axe as well, does mean that you can customise the shaft as you like because you've got more wood to start with than you actually need. Okay, so reducing the width on this, I would say in both planes, start off with making it flatter, secondly then make it a little bit narrower, and what I intend to do is actually probably chop a bit of the handle off, so shorten it a, a little bit, I just feel it's a little bit too long, um, and I intend to almost make a, a flared end, a bit like a pommel, to just prevent the hand sliding off. I might also add some uh, ribs going up as well, partly aesthetic, but also partly for grip. Um, so that's fine, and actually that's maybe what I'll do with some of my day to day, is a little bit of uh, woodworking, which is fun. However, the warning for those of you uh, buying this would be that the shaft, in my view, doesn't really come ready to use. It comes ready to use in terms of literally smacking something, but it, it's not, unless you've got absolutely huge hands, it's just a bit too big in the hand. However, a good thing is it is oval. They haven't fallen into the, fallen into the trap of making a round, <coughs> circular um, shaft which would uh, turn in the hand. The oval, at least, does give you the edge alignment, which is nice, but I am going to have to thin it down. Final thing I would say about the service from Wolfland, um, they weren't very quick. Um, in fairness to them, I did email them and ask when I was going to get my axe, and they immediately replied back and uh, told me. Um, so that wasn't a problem, uh, but just it did take about six weeks to arrive, so you won't get the thing immediately. So there we go guys, a little look at this axe. I'm sure I'll be sharpening it up, doing some work on the shaft, and I'll use it in future videos. Cheers!